I'm going for a walk. I'll be back in a bit. You finish your thing? Yep. Welcome to Pick Up and Deliver, the podcast where I pick up my audio recorder as I step out for a walk and deliver an episode to you while I stroll around. I'm Brendan Riley. Well, good afternoon. Actually, good morning. It's a lovely morning here in suburban Chicago. I mean, it's humid. I'm going to be pretty warm by the time I get home, but uh, it's a lovely day and the sun is sort of half in half out we've got those kind of puffy clouds but relatively strong cloud cover it wouldn't surprise me if it rains later in the day although it could be going away i think it was more cloudy earlier so it might be breaking up we'll see we'll see what happens nonetheless i think i'm pretty safe in the next 20 minutes from some precipitation so why don't you and i talk about games that's right i don't have a particular there's not a sting i said that's right like i was going into a regular segment i'm not I'm just here to talk about some games. I was thinking about what is gonna be the best approach today for talking to you about games. Because I've done all my regular segments recently. I didn't feel like it's time to do another regular segment. So I was thinking about what I might do and I realized the 4th of July is coming up. I'm recording this a few days before it comes out, uh, two days before it comes out in fact. And so it occurred to me, well, tomorrow's the 4th of July, maybe I'll do a 4th of July theme storm. And then I look, and I did one. I did one a long time ago. I did a 4th of July special in episode 65. So that was six years ago, uh, or seven years ago. This is season seven. Yeah, seven years ago. And so I I did this already. I didn't go listen to it, but I was thinking about what might I wanna say about a 4th of July theme storm. And frankly, uh, given the state of things today, I am not super keen to talk about politics. I am hopeful that things will go well in the next few months, but nervous about the way things have been going, particularly in the more regressive parts of the country. So I did decide I did not want to do a 4th of July episode, but it did get me thinking about the specificity of days And so I just took a look and I said, what's some stuff that happened on July 5th in history? And I figure, eh, this might be amusing to do. It's a sort of theme storm around a specific day. And what I thought I'd do is make a list of significant historical events from that day and talk about them a little and a game that I think would go with them if you wanted to celebrate them. I will admit this is uh, an idea that's a little bit stolen from a TikTok channel that I enjoy. I don't know the name of the channel. If you look in the show notes, I'll put it in there. But on this channel, these two women who love board games have a thing where each day they post a video where they say, this is today in history. And they'll either do, it is a, you know, it is National Cupcake Day or sometimes they will say, here's something that happened in history, and then they'll talk about a game they would play with it. I didn't realize until literally just now as I'm walking that I was stealing that idea from them. I mean, not that this day in history is that you know, unusual an idea, but it occurs to me now that I am getting very close to what they do on a, in a micro level in terms of they each pick one game for the day, whereas I'm doing a whole theme story episode about it. But I will acknowledge 
perhaps somewhere in my brain said, that's a fun idea, I'm gonna swipe it. So uh, do go look at the show notes and check them out on TikTok. I don't know if they have stuff on other channels or not, but their TikTok is fun. Jane and Jen are their names. So nonetheless, uh, if we were looking at July 5th, what would we find to talk about from a history perspective? There's a bunch of things actually. So the first event that caught my eye was in 1996, Dolly the Sheep was public, was cloned. The announcement of Dolly the Sheep was cloned. It'd be hard to understand now what an immense idea that was in 1996 that someone had cloned a sheep. Cloning was cutting edge technology at the time. It still is to a degree, but we have learned so much more about DNA manipulation and biology that cloning as an act seems relatively harmless now, or not harmless, but uh, pedestrian for high-end scientists, of course. Nonetheless, when it happened, when the Scottish scientists announced that they had cloned a sheep, the world took notice. So I was thinking about what is a game, I know there are games that I've played that have clones in them. And for a while, the only thing I could think of was Android Netrunner. Now, Android Netrunner has a whole faction that's all about clones, uh, or androids, as they call them, but they're biosynthetic. So they're more like replicants from the Blade Runner universe, and they have a kind of cloned element to them. But I was trying to think about other games where cloning is uh, part of the game. And the two games I could think of were uh, Loop Inc. and Star Wars The Clone Wars. Now, Star Wars The Clone Wars is one of the pandemic world or pandemic style games. So it is essentially an adaptation of pandemic to fit the Clone Wars movie or Clone Wars idea and then made into a game that way. So, you know, there are clones in that game. Uh, But then Loop Inc., also has this idea of clones running around causing trouble and uh, you have to defeat them before they overwhelm you. Now clones as a science fictional object are pretty interesting, particularly in the, like the biological clone is one thing. It's not, it's not as frightening to me because ultimately it's just a, it's a replication of a previous biological entity, but it is itself its own thing. Nonetheless, in like in uh, Jurassic World 2, the revelation of certain kinds of cloning is seen as frightening and 
in fact, the whole Jurassic Park, Jurassic World series, and the Dinosaur Island mo games are all kind of about cloning, and they all turn on this notion that un unfettered cloning or un uncareful cloning or unthoughtful cloning is dangerous, deadly, problematic, is science taking the power of life into their own hands and possibly causing trouble with it. So the idea of cloning has been around for a long time, but sort of seeing it in games, maybe today is a day to play a game about cloning, if you have one of those three. Next up, this is an event I never heard about or didn't know anything about. Apparently in 1978, a group of people occupied a traffic intersection in Denver to stop traffic and draw attention to and protest the fact that the bus system in Denver was inaccessible to a lot of people. The group, apparently called the Gang of 19, which is a pretty badass name for a political group, of uh, peaceful protesters. And I say that not having read too much about it, they might not have been peaceful protesters. But the idea of this seems uh, pretty solid and interesting. And something that's worth reading about, but also worth playing a game in celebration of. Now perhaps the game would ideally be in celebration of civic protest. And there aren't that many games that focus on that sort of thing. I know there's a game about, this, about the Stonewall protests in New York. Uh, but I did think about, you could play games about buses, just to sort of think about <laughs> buses in uh, your city. And there's two. As a lighter game, you could try out Let's Make a Bus Route, uh, which is a Saatchi and Saatchi game, I believe, about planning bus routes through the city. And the idea is each player is planning a different bus route through the city, but you have overlapping routes, as buses do, and you're trying to most, make the most efficient bus route that's going to get you the most points, even as the whole city is available to you. Similarly, or on the other end of the spectrum, there is the splatter game, Bus, which I've heard a number of good reviews about, and as I listen to and explore the idea of splatter games, bus seems like one of the ones that would be more interesting to me. Like many of these games, it seems to have a weird mix of mechanisms and be a little bit on the crazy side. I think there's time travel involved with these buses and something about taking people to the bar after work, I think. It looks, it sounds pretty delightful and if I had a chance to play bus, I probably would take it. So that's bus, a good way to celebrate Gang of 19, the Gang of 19, 1978 protest action. Next up, in 1946, the bikini swimsuit was introduced, named after the Bikini Atoll, I believe. Uh, it is a two-piece bathing suit that was, I expect, seen as pretty scandalous in 1946 and has been part of American culture and world culture ever since. Now, if you were going to play a game related to this, it seems like a game about beaches would be the thing. And the best game I can think of to play about beaches is Santa Monica. Santa Monica is a tableau building card collection game in which you are arranging different businesses and features on the Santa Monica pier that are designed to help introduce or designed to get you the most points they can by what they're next to and um, who is visiting them. Different elements of the Santa, Santa, different elements of Santa Monica score differently depending on their neighbors and these little pieces that represent tourists and locals and VIPs who move around on the board and score points.
I will say, as far as I know, Santa Monica doesn't actually feature any bikinis in the game. So if you're looking for a game that's about bikinis specifically, I'm not sure what I would suggest. But if you want to look at something about beach culture, it feels like Santa Monica is the game to play. It's a nice light drafting game. It's a lot of fun and it's easy to teach. So that's my suggestion. Josh Wood, I believe is the designer of that one. And it's from AEG. Next up in 1775, we have the Olive Branch Petition. So the Olive Branch Petition, as I read about it, was an act by the Continental Congress, the last sort of hurrah to try to stave off the American Revolution. The Continental Congress recognized that the revolution was going to be rough on Americans, it was going to be expensive, it was going to be deadly, and it could fail. And so they wanted to try to reach an agreement with King George so they didn't have to have a revolution. And so they sent something called the Olive Branch Agreement, an offer to King George to try to stave off revolution. He apparently did not agree to the deal, and in 1776 we went to war. But I am intrigued by the idea of trying to keep the peace. And I'm reminded of a game that I've mentioned before. It's a kind of a weird co-op called Dawn of the Peacemakers. And Dawn of the Peacemakers has a premise. It's very strange. Feel free to look up the Board Game Espresso episode where I mentioned it. But in Dawn of the Peacemakers, players represent the, the interests of the king who is trying to maintain control of his kingdom, despite the fact that factions in his kingdom are at war with one another. So the king is upset by the disruption to his kingdom caused by these warring factions and the potential ill will it brings his way for not keeping the peace. So in Dawn of the Peacemakers, you play people, envoys, sent by the king, supposedly to help in these different battles. But what you're actually supposed to try to do is keep the battles as even as possible so that neither side feels like it's making progress in the war effort. Because the idea is if either side feels like it's making progress in the war effort, they will press harder to take advantage of that progress and perhaps kill a lot more people and win the war or whatever. Continue pressing the war effort. Instead, you as the peacemakers, your goal is to keep the casualties even or drive the two sides to a stalemate in the battle so that they will both retreat and feel demoralized about the war and hopefully stop warring. That's the premise of the game. We played one game of it. I thought it was pretty interesting. We succeeded in keeping the battle a stalemate, but it, it took a lot of thinking and careful manipulation of the different parts. So it's a really interesting idea for a game. I'm not sure it's great, but really interesting. And if you're, in, if you're interested in taking today to celebrate the 1775 Olive Branch petition, Perhaps Dawn of the Peacemakers might be your choice. Uh, finally, the last of the events from July 5th in history that I wanted to bring up. And these are all, these all seem to have been American. Well, no, Dolly the Sheep was Scottish. The bikini was French, I believe. But this last one is thoroughly American. 18th, July 5th, 1865 is the day that Andrew Johnson, the president who came into office after Abraham Lincoln was assassinated signed the execution orders for the Lincoln assassin conspir assassination conspirators. Now, if you've read much about this, which I will admit I have not, but my understanding is that the Lincoln assassination conspirators, there are some who were very clearly um, necessarily involved and very clearly deserved governmental punishment. 
Whether that's a hanging or not, I don't know. Uh, I generally would not think the government should execute anybody, but people who try to assassinate state leaders, I don't know. Uh, there's some... It's such a significant anti-democratic move that I'm, I'm uh, ambivalent about it. But there are people who were part of, who were tried as part of this assassination plot who may or may not have reasonably been associated with it. Some people who were unaware of what was happening, is my understanding, and some who assisted afterward. In particular, there's a lot of commentary I understand about Samuel Mudd, the doctor who treated John Wilkes Booth's leg. Some people branded him a traitor. Other people said, if you're a doctor, you have to treat the patient in front of you. You can't refuse to treat a patient just because you don't like them or they're a criminal. So that's an interesting question. If you wanted to wrestle this out further, there's a game that I've heard is very good uh, called Unforgiven, The Trial of the Lincoln Assassins. And what it is, is it is a back and forth card driven game in which you are trying to sway jury members to your side uh, regarding the Lincoln assassination. My understanding is it plays in a similar way to something like um, Watergate, but it's about the Lincoln assassination instead. It looks like a really interesting game. When it came out, it's just not the sort of game I'm going to play a lot, so I, it wasn't, I wasn't willing to invest in it. But it does look interesting, and if someone brought it to a game night, I would certainly be willing to try it. So that's, that might be one way to celebrate or remember the 1865 condemnation of the Lincoln assassination conspirators. Well, that's it for my reminiscing on July 5th history today. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Are there other events that you, you think should be worth discussing? What games would you play in response to these events? Uh, head over to Board Game Geek Guild 3269 and let me know your thoughts. Uh, otherwise, until next time, thanks for joining me. I hope your next walk is as pleasant as mine was. Bye-bye.